the organizers for the kind invitations and in the next uh, 10 minutes we are going to present an interesting uh, presentation regarding a special group of patients, patients that are initially exclusion criteria for the pivotal randomized trials that uh, bring the tower in the indications. Um, I'm going to start with a uh, relative extreme case presentation that was a man, 60, uh, 46 years old, that came to us after he was recently rejected for uh, uh, renal transplantation, uh, mainly because of the high risk due to the uh, high cardiovascular risk because of the aortic valve stenosis, the um, moderated EF, and of course, the high pulmonary hypertension. And that was a patient with end stage renal disease due to Alport syndrome. Um, so we proceed with a transfemoral tower implanting a sapin XT26 uh, millimeter. And of course, the initial result was excellent. And during the follow up, we have seen that. We have seen that uh, in the uh, first uh, year, the hemodynamic behavior of the patient was excellent. Um, uh, however, after the first uh, um, 15 months, the um, hemodynamic behavior was uh, um, deteriorated uh, relatively uh, significant, and that was because of a tertiary hyperparthyroidism and uncontrolled uh, calcium concentration in this patient that did, uh, uh, lead to a um, uh, deterioration of the aortic valve function. And so we can see that uh, almost in 21 months, the uh, poor patient had all, uh, again, a moderate uh, aortic valve stenosis. And uh, until we decide what we, how we are going to proceed with this patient, unfortunately, the patient died because of cardiogenic shock. And what we, know, what we know up to now is that the survival rate of such uh, patients it is um, impaired and uh, the mean uh, survival rate for patients uh, under 40 45 years old is around uh, five years and of course there is no uh, difference between the genders uh, however if we compare the survival rate of such patients with patients that have been uh, already transplanted you can see that the survival in the second group it was two to three times better. And this is because that uh, patients that have already transplanted, they have a different nat nature, uh, history and uh, prognosis um, comparing to end-stage renal disease patients. What we, it's also known that the last 10 years, the uh, tower uh, increased um, um, three uh, to four times the um, uh, replacement of the aortic valve in such patients. And of course, there is a higher acceleration um, rate progression of the aortic valve stenosis, which is two to three times higher in the end stage renal disease patients comparing to non uh, dialysis patients. And of course, there is a variability regarding the progression of um, AES in such patients. And if we want uh, to uh, group this variability, we can see that there are rapid progressors and slow progressors. And this has to do mainly with metabolic profile of the patients. And we have to treat the patients according to the the, uh, the, this variability. So if we have a moderate aortic valve stenosis in a rapid progression, then we have to proceed faster with the treatment procedures. So the operation time is an important issue in such cases because we know, uh, according to recent um, meta-analysis, that uh, the waiting strategy in this group of patients is compared with three to four times higher mortality rate. And what uh, the rapid progressions, uh, def what do we define as rapid progressors? We define rapid progressors as the patients that the uh, gradient, the peak gradient increases more than 10 uh, uh, millimeters of mercury per, per year. And this is mainly due to uh, uncontrolled blood pressure and of course an exacerbated metabolic profile that is mainly uh, has to do with uh, the uh, calcium concentration. There was an initial enthusiasm regarding the statins according to observational data, but this was not true uh, uh, after randomized trials. And according to retrospective analysis and observational studies, we can see that the survival rate of patients which are in end stage uh, renal disease patients, it is worse compared to non-dialysis patients. And this is mainly due to uh, cardiovascular death and 
uh, one third of the cases due to aortic valve stenosis. If we compare the TAVR with uh, uh, classical aortic valve replacement, we can see that there is a huge difference in the end hospital mortality, which is more than 50%. And this is when we proceed to through the uh, femoral. When uh, we decide to proceed because of the anatomical reasons uh, from transapical access, you can see that this mortality range is not different. And of course, there are different other mortality predictors of mortality. The age is one of them. The functional status is another one important. Most of the end-stage renal disease patients have a worse uh, uh, functional status, um, comorbidities, and mainly the uh, comorbidities having to do with the lung function, the decrease EF. Um, the TAVR procedure according to different registries, like the front registry, uh, we can see that the uh, procedural success it is lower in the end-stage renal disease patients. And of course, there is a, a longer uh, hospitalization, longer stay in intensive care unit. There is an increased uh, rate of uh, blood transfusion due to hemorrhage in this group of patients. There is a slight statistical increase of vascular complications and need for uh, permanent pacemaker implantation. Another issue in uh, this group of patients is which type of valve is um, uh, the most appropriate. We have used, according to retrospective data, bioprosthetic and mechanical valves. You can see that there is no difference in the uh, short and long-term mortality between the two groups. The decision and the valve selection has, was, has mainly to do with uh, AIDS. In younger patients, um, we have used mainly the mechanical valves, although we have seen that there was a greater bleeding uh, risk, there was a greater thromboembolic risk, uh, however, these uh, complications do not, does not, do not affect the uh, survival rate uh, in compared to bioprosthetic valves. And which bioprosthetic valve is important? There was an issue or, uh, or when we use porcrine or bovine pericardial prosthesis, if there is any um, um, effect in the survival, that was just an issue. And of course, there is a great difference in the cost, mainly in the in-hospital uh, cost, uh, re uh, comparing the tower with the surgical uh, aortic valve replacement. Another important thing is that there are many patients that are good candidates for the uh, transplantation, for renal transplantation. However, uh, the uh, severe aortic valve stenosis, it was a, a barrier for proceeding with uh, uh, transplantation. So the tower uh, gave a solution in this group of patients. And uh, although we don't have a lot of data regarding the renal transplanting recipients, we can see that these patients uh, have a higher risk for acute coronary uh, acute, uh, for um, uh, acute coronary incidence, more than 50% of these patients, um, and in relation with um, uh, surgical, classical surgical aortic valve replacement, they have uh, less inflammatory uh, stress, and uh, this is a great advantage of the TAVR procedure. And we know uh, that if we have a um, worsening of the EGFR more than 10%, the mortality changes. And of course, there are different perioperative factors that are associated with uh, acute coronary, um, uh, with um, acute kidney uh, insufficiency after TAVR. And uh, I want to point out the hypotension during rapid procedure, uh, during rapid ventricular pacing, the transapical approach, and of course, the use of contrast agent. And if we compare the uh, transplant recipient patients with uh, end stage renal disease patients that uh, uh, proceeded with uh, TAVR, you can see that in the transplant recipient patients there is a greater risk of infections and sepsis, and this is the most important uh, cause of mortality. According to our data, the end stage renal disease patients is approximately 3%, and this is uh, uh, also in the other registries. Uh, we have uh, only less than 1% patients that have already uh, been transplanted. Uh, you can see that the functional status of such patients was worse. Uh, more than 40% of the patients were patients with an IHA status of 04. The end stage renal disease, it was not 
an issue uh, to decide which valve is important. Uh, we use uh, both type of valves, sapient and core valve, with the same uh, rate. And um, uh, according to the uh, complications, we have seen that there is a higher tendency of uh, bleeding and need for uh, red cell blood transfusion in this group of patients. The hemodynamic behavior was not different among the uh, different groups. And I'm going to end the, my presentation with another interesting case. That was a, a 45 years old lady with severe aortic valve stenosis and stage renal disease due to nephrotic syndrome. And came to a, she has a great uh, high uh, surgical risk according to Euroscore and ASTS mortality score. We proceed with Tavar implanting a SAPI NXT 23 millimeters valve. And then during the follow-up, you can see that this <coughs> lady, it was a slow progressor. She has an excellent hemodynamic behavior in the first three to four years. And afterwards, she was uh, deteriorated the function of the bioprosthetic valves. And you see that in the 45 months, the mean gradient was 32. And then uh, 10 months later, the mean gradient was 45. And here it comes the issue when you have to treat such patients. And maybe when uh, the slow progressors become rapid progressors, then we have to treat the cases uh, faster. Um, and that was the echo image before the redo tower for this lady. And we proceed with a valve in valve uh, procedure, implanting a sapien, new generation sapien valve, sapien 3, 23 millimeters, with great uh, afterwards uh, hemodynamic and clinical behavior. So, in conclusion, we have to say that the progression rate of aortic valve stenosis is, of course, greater in end stage renal disease patients. There are a variability in the progression rate, and there are slow and rapid progressions, and a great issue is when we have to treat, when it will be the operative time. Of course, there is an accelerated structural failure of bioprosthetic valves because of the um, metabolic uh, factors. The valve in valve procedure in such patients is safe and effective solution. And one of the most important barriers for uh, transplanting end stage renal disease patients was the uh, severe aortic valve stenosis. And it seems that the TAVR is a great solution for such patients. Thank you very much for your... Thank you, Dr. Halapas. The presentation was excellent and to the point. Any questions? Quick question. So, I want a senior cardiac surgeon viewpoint and a senior cardiologist, maybe someone from the panel viewpoint. You know, the teaching, as you were saying, used to be for these patients, you know, they're going to calcify, they're going to do all these things, put in a mechanical valve. And then other people looked at it and looked at some studies and said, you know, the, the, the patient's life, lifespan is less than the lifespan of the valve. Why don't you just give them a uh, biological valve and that way they don't have all of the issues with uh, bleeding. So I'd like to hear a senior cardiac surgeon, whoever wants to, to speak, and then maybe a senior cardiologist from the panel, uh, just to, to, to hear differing opinions. I think the pendulum has swung now towards bioprosthetic valves, but does it also make a difference if they're 50 years old or 70 years old, although we know that Patients on dialysis, they have a short lifespan regardless. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, as a cardiac surgeon, we all know that uh, in these patients, and especially uh, I will remind you, Dr. Ross has said once, when the first biological valves were introduced to the market, the thing that we look at is the slow progressors. I mean, there is no perfect valve, either biological or mechanical, and we all know that. So we alleviate the patient's symptoms, and we watch him carefully when the time has come to intervene. As far as my experience, I have the worst possible experience from uh, uh, end renal disease patients on dialysis. And my preference is, since we have the TAVI luxury now, to put a bioprosthetic valve if the patient comorbidities allow me to do that. And then follow him along with the cardiologist very carefully. And when the time comes, proceed with the tally. But it's the slow progressive disease and you have to watch that. That's it. 
That's correct. Sort of a panel thing. Yeah. Someone, what, do you, what do you want for your patients? Someone from the panel, what do you want for your patients who are age 60 and on dialysis? In my opinion, we haven't found the solution until this moment. We need more progression for this uh, problem. So if you look at the SDS database uh, for people on dialysis that have an AVR and survive their procedure, if you're 80 or over, your mean survival, if you survive your surgery, is less than a year. It's eight months. If you're 70 to 80, your mean survival is less than three years. If you're 60 to 70, your mean survival is less than five years. And so these people really don't live very long. To get longer than five years, you have to be 40 or less. Now, we're all going to have some people that survive a long time. What we tend to do is if somebody comes to me and they're acutely put on dialysis, I'm very worried about doing anything to them. If they've survived a year or two, then I feel a little more comfortable that they're going to do okay. And most of them go to Tabor because they just do so well. They're not going to live very long. The biggest problem I have is the person who looks pretty good and they're really not that bad, but they're going to get a transplant. My transplant people won't touch them until we do something. And, you know, there are people that we might not treat otherwise, but now we're forced to do something. Thanks, um, it's a little different in Canada. We don't have the same access as the Americans do to these valves. So uh, on the younger, healthier, robust patients in their 60s, we're, we're going to surgical aortic valve replacement. The fact is many of these people also have bad coronary artery disease as well. Uh, they're not the other, the healthy 80 year olds with very normal coronary arteries. So we're still doing a lot of surgery for these pa patients, but uh, uh, where's that sweet, sweet spot? I don't know, but definitely these patients don't do well long-term. Yes, biologic valves for the most part, because we also know uh, the renal patient, dialysis patients either bleed more or thrombose more, and they're not very good on anticoagulation long term, that's for sure. Thank you, gentlemen. So we will proceed. Look, Thank you so much. much. Okay. Uh, good morning for me. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, during the procedure of TAVI, as we know, there are many problems, uh, anatomical uh, problems, uh, mainly related to uh, to the procedure and to